Dungeness Crab, Pacific Northwest. One of the great things about living in the Pacific Northwest is having access to one of the tastiest things in the water, which is Dungeness crab. One of the most important things to having good crab is to start with good fresh crab, which this is not. If you want good crab, you got to start with this. And you put the chicken here. Crabs like that. Now when you let out your pots, it's crucial if you've never done this, you've got to put your ropes out first and then you throw the pot. Otherwise people get tangled ropes in these pots, throw their pot and everything sinks and you lose your pot. So throw your rope first, pot second. One out, you've got to keep the ropes away from the motor. out there right now wondering where my crab polar is. I bought one, however I have not installed it yet. As you know it requires drilling into your boat and I've got to make sure exactly where I want it first. So we're pulling these by hand. Dungeness Crab, Pacific Northwest. All right, there's some crabs to sort. So the difference between the male and female crab Right here you see the shape of this, that is a male. Now, if I can find another one right here, if you look at the shape of this one, that's a female. So all female crabs like that have to go back. This is a male, and I don't think you can measure. You measure from the points here, the inside of the point, and it has to be five and three quarters so we're just store again there's a mouth gotta be five and three quarters and we are just there with him okay so here's a little tip fisherman when you put crabs in your cooler or your whole tank or whatever you have like this, you start filling water, just barely fill it to go over these crabs. If you overfill your water, when you're coming back, it's gonna be splashing around and you're gonna get back with broken crabs. Trust me, learned it the hard way. So barely fill it, then just cover the crabs and you're good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna clean these crabs. If this is not your cup of tea or if this is something you don't want to see i'm going to post at the bottom of the video the time that you can fast forward it to um, some people don't like to know where their food comes from others uh, may be watching this video for this reason so i'm going to show you what i do with these crabs uh, i typically clean them before i put them in the boiler because uh, quite frankly i don't want all that nasty stuff being in the water and in the cooker that I'm using. 
Uh, a lot of people will boil the crabs whole and then they rip the shell off and they clean and if you've ever seen that I know there's some videos on YouTube where you can see that it's not what I like um, when they open that up and there's all that stuff on the inside people call it the mustard some people even eat that stuff they say it's an acquired taste again it's not for me so we clean our crab before we put them in the boiler and I'm gonna show you how so again if this is not something you want to watch fast forward the video otherwise here we go so I know there's a lot of different ways of doing this I'm gonna show you mine I typically will take these crabs out now a quick little uh, note here these gloves I'm wearing are fillet gloves so they're basically for filleting fish and supposedly you can't cut them with a knife but I use them for crab because when I go through cleaning these there's a lot of sharp points um, all over these crabs and tends to beat up your hands these gloves work amazing for protecting them so here we go uh, you can either grab them back like this and pin the claws down but I just set them right here on the bucket and I give them one good pat and immediately then I grab both sides and I rip these legs off like that I rip these legs off like this and again right here is all the stuff that I don't want in the water that I'm cooking and what I'm eating now these right here are gills if you're new to this do not mistake these as the body or lump crab meat these they got to go you do not want to eat that they peel right off do that take one good like that and you have a perfect crab leg ready to boil perfect cluster again on this one we're gonna show you we're gonna take these gills off I'm gonna throw them in there we're gonna get this one good right like that and that is a perfect cluster of crab legs ready to boil so here we go again on another one again very quick and I'm gonna keep the camera rolling and I'm gonna do two or three one good pound that side off that side off remove these throw them down in and I don't think of a quicker or easier way of doing this if you do comment let me know that's how quick they go that's how many we move through right now one good pound this side off this side off gills are off gills are off see in just about that time we have already what five crabs done so pretty quick process and we'll show you where we go from here okay so back to these gloves I say they're knife proof they help you from getting caught on edges and stuff I've never actually been pinched with one of these on <laughs> but I guess now's as good a time as ever to find out so let's see what happens if a crab gets a hold of you. This is an angry little one, and let's see what happens right here. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can still feel the pressure. It definitely uh, doesn't cut you or make you bleed like sometimes they do. But never tried that with the gloves on. <laughs> here we go. Everybody go out and buy some of these gloves. All right, so without fail, I know how people on YouTube are there is going to be somebody in the comments that says i don't think you should clean them before you boil them boil them whole 
even though I recommend and I tell you the reasons I don't, somebody's still gonna say too. So I just wanna show you this. If you don't clean your crab, if you just send them straight to the boiler, here's what's in your boiling pot with what you're about to eat. Mm. In my water, we just go with some regular table salt. Gonna salt the water a little bit. And with that, we are gonna put one lemon. So just kind of freshens it up. It smells good, especially while it's cooking. And then uh, a thing here in the northwest, I don't know how many of you have heard of it, but we use pickling spice. So do not ask me why that tastes good when you boil your crab, but it does. So we're going to basically put in the whole thing of pickling spice. We just add that right to the water. And as soon as this is boiling, we'll be ready to throw the crab in. Got a good rolling boil. We're gonna throw these crabs in. Now, there's gonna be a lot of different people talking about how long do these need to cook. I'm just gonna tell you what I do. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but it works for me. I typically put these in and I bring it back to a boil and I cook them for about 10 minutes. Now, I know some of you are gonna comment or say that's way too much. I've seen some people go as little as four minutes after they return the boil. I go 10, maybe I'm paranoid, but I don't see any negative side to it. So we go 10. Okay, so this has been 10 minutes. We're gonna shut it off. Now, I typically go directly into an ice bath with these. Like I said, I cook them a little bit longer than some people do. So I go directly into an ice bath as soon as they are cooked. A little close up on that one. Claw. Alright, so the crab rub is one teaspoon salt. It's a good quality salt, no table salt. I'm using sea salt. I'm gonna have two teaspoons of Old Bay seasoning. You're gonna have one teaspoon of accent. That's basically a preservative and it does have some salt flavor to it, I believe. We're gonna throw in one teaspoon of paprika, one half teaspoon of sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now you can adjust the cayenne to your taste. We prefer about a quarter teaspoon. And we're gonna mix that all up. And then we'll show you where we go with that. The garlic butter. I typically just put a little bit of olive oil in just to kind of saute the garlic in. I do add a little bit of butter. As you know, sometimes butter burns or browns a little too quickly. I like to think the olive oil kind of slows that down. Now I am using minced garlic. So I know some of you are going to say, should always use fresh. This was a special occasion. I might mince up my own garlic for tonight. I'm using some of this and it turns out great. So we're gonna put a little scoop of that in there. We're gonna toss that around. Careful to not let it burn. And once we start getting a little bit of browning on that butter, 
or on that garlic, excuse me. We're gonna cut out this butter. I'm gonna actually add a little more garlic. We're making quite a bit of butter. Haven't been in there too long, it should be okay. It smells amazing. All right, so we're getting some good color on that garlic. We're gonna start adding butter. Kind of saute that down just enough to let it melt. Now that garlic is starting to get a little bit brown, so I'm gonna pull it off and let the butter just melt. Now if that garlic is more brown than you like it, Trust me when I say, once I run this through the strainer and strain it off, that butter is going to be infused with a nice flavor. All right. All right, so that butter is melted. I'm going to run it through the strainer. Pulling out that garlic. And again, part of why I like the minced garlic is it's chopped really fine. So. When you're straining that out, you still infuse a lot of flavor. So with this butter, if you want, you can clarify it just by taking a spoon, just giving off that top. Now, as you can see, this butter is not real clear. We did infuse quite a bit of garlic in it. Maybe that had some effect. Sometimes it turns out a lot more clear than this. But I'm sure it's going to taste delicious. Okay. Okay, so I talked about keeping a couple of shells. So if you've got guests or a date or something, somebody you're trying to impress, you can keep a shell and you can basically put a cluster on each side of it. And you can put the shell down like this. And then obviously you could serve your butter or whatever maybe if you have some small fingerling potatoes spread around the edge you got a pretty attractive plate to impress somebody with all right so there's three essential tools that i use for eating crab one of them is these little picks i guess you'd call it get them on amazon they're really inexpensive they typically come with crackers like this now some people use these and kind of pry the shells open, which I'll be showing you. Um, what I prefer and what I've found the best tool is these little crab lobster scissors. Buy them on Amazon. They're very inexpensive. I think they're like 12, 13 bucks for three of them and they're worth their weight in gold. So when you take these legs out, I'm going to tell you, a lot of times I've seen people that don't have a lot of experience with crabs. They buy a crab that's cooked whole and the first thing they go out and do is they just break the legs off at the base. Now if you break the legs off at that base, you are missing out on that entire section of lump crab meat. So the best way to get this out is to get your picker and just start pulling it out. So what you'll find is where this is all held is kind of a honeycomb kind of design. It's really thin. Break, crack some of that. Make it easier to get into, you can. But you can get all these really nice pieces. And they are delicious. All right, so we've got a leg, and I'm just gonna show you this one time through. If you need to see it again, you can rewind. But again, we're picking out that good lump meat out of the base. And as soon as we get that lump meat out, here's what I typically do. So I break it anywhere there's a knuckle, I break off. Break off here, and I pull this out. Now that cartilage right there is the reason that some people hit these with a hammer, break it, and then they're still pulling out just shreds of meat because they have not removed that right there. So this way, I can get in here, and now let's go in and show you these scissors. I typically just cut right down the center, like that, turn it over, 
go right down the center again. Open that up, and look what you have here. Full intact piece, can go in the butter. My favorite is the cocktail sauce with some lemon. Now we're gonna go down the leg, onto the next piece, same thing. Anywhere there's a joint, I typically break off. Pull that cartilage out. This is going to be a smaller piece, still worth getting into. Open that up, we can pull that right out. Got a beautiful piece of meat. Right down to the next one, pull that out, that cartilage. Same thing, repeat. Open that up. Might use our little picker right here. Pick that out. There's a beautiful piece of meat. Pause. Okay, so for the crab seasoning we made, I don't use that every time, but sometimes it's good. So I typically just take a few clusters of like, put them in a Ziploc. Take a little of this crab seasoning, throw it in, and then just kind of toss them around. Now, I know what a lot of you will be saying right now, and what you may be thinking. You might say, well, how is that seasoning going to work when these, the meat is still in the shell? It's not going to actually get into the meat. Well, I'll tell you what it does. The crab seasoning, one, it does get into the lump parts of the meat. But as you start eating this, as you start breaking these up, look where that seasoning is ending up. It's ending up on my hands, on my fingers. So when I start breaking into these legs and I'm pulling out some of this meat, that seasoning is getting on that. You can see it all right here. So when I cut open this leg right here, I'm ultimately going to cut both sides like I showed you before. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to take that meat and as you can see, so I got seasoning. It's a really good spice. You can still dip it in your butter. Got a little cayenne, a little kick to it. Adds a nice flavor to the crab. All right, so I'm gonna show you on one of these claws what I do with them. They're pretty similar to this style of the other legs to where I break them at each joint. So you break it there. Now, you want to take this pivoting knuckle out because that's going to be, again, that cartilage that holds all that together. Now I go right down the center again. And again, if you're cracking these with the hammer, you're going to get little shards. You even get some of the shards. Well, I got a few there. But typically, you don't get them as bad. Even when you use these and break them, you tend to get a lot of shards. But you're going to open that up picker. We'll slide that right out. There is a nice big chunk of claw meat. Now on this one, I like some cocktail sauce with lemon. And that's delicious. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck to everybody. And go catch some crabs.